Hey guys, it's your girl Kaylee from Zipnada Sustainable Lifestyle Brand for those of you who don't know. Um, this video I interviewed Armando from One Plastic Life and I'm really excited about this because we met on Instagram and what he's doing is amazing. He's tackling both the plastic issue, like existing plastic, and uh, the topic of homelessness and providing resources for people in need. He's doing an amazing job reaching out to communities um, in LA, in, in the LA area. So I am really excited to open up um, this discussion with him. and. Although I personally focus more on uh, prevention, so teaching people to try and make better choices um, by using like reusable items, um, your own bags, different tips and tricks such as that, it is also really important to have conversations about the amount of plastic that's already out there and what are we going to do with it and how are we going to keep it from further damaging our communities in the form of litter. So this is a great way to do that. He makes beautiful products out of it and without further ado, uh, let's talk to Armando from One Plastic Life. Uh, my name is Armando Ochoa. Um, I'm the founder of One Plastic Life. Uh, One Plastic Life is a nonprofit organization uh, focused on reducing plastic pollution. We provide job training opportunities to homeless and unemployed people. What is your mission and goals? Uh, my mission is to provide a service to homeless people in my community. Um, it's a growing thing uh, where I live. Um, you can see numerous people over and over stuck in this problem and I just decided to do something about it. Um, I to provide them with a job, uh, make contact with them to uh, provide them with different resources um, to get them where they need to be, whether it be mental health, uh, drug abuse, um, housing, anything that they need. I pretty much made contact with all the Los Angeles uh, resources that are out there and um, I get to know that person uh, little by little and get to know what, what, what problems are they facing and then refer them to where they can get some help. How did you get <laughs> involved with that? Construction for a while. Um, and I was in charge of doing all the waste management for the buildings. And at the time, um, as I was working, a lot of my friends were going through um, housing problems they started getting stuck on drugs um things like that and they would ask me for a job and i wouldn't be able to provide them with a job because they don't even have a phone they can't get transportation and it was just like how do i help this person and and provide them with a job and at the time i was making decent money working construction and i bought myself a fish tank a reef tank and I just started falling in love with the ocean and like corals and that, that snowballed into like plastic pollution. And then I stumbled across precious plastic and what they're doing. And I just decided, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build these machines. I'm gonna create some jobs for people and I'm gonna change people's lives. And that's kind of what I've been doing. Just snowballed all, all together. Um, so how long <laughs> have you been operating? Um, so we are officially a 501c3 uh, for three years. This is, we're going on our third year. Um, yeah, so it's a slow process. Baby steps is what I say to the team, you know, to get to where we need to be. Obviously, we can always grow more. Uh, we're always looking for people that can help us out and are passionate about what we're doing. How many people are on your team? Uh, so far, it's like four. It's four of us. Um, mostly, um, I'm doing all the ground the groundwork. I have people doing um, like the computer aspect, the office uh, situation, and then I have people doing advocating, and then I pretty much do the community outreach and the actual process of recycling the plastic. Do you have like any partners you work with, or? Um, so not what really does at the community outreach look like. 
Um, so pretty much I, I go out to different campsites. Um, the way I started was I started bringing people to, I don't, I don't have a facility. I don't have a facility. I don't have a place where I actually recycle pretty much. I came up with this idea and I just started building it, um, in my backyard, in my garage. Um, so what I started doing, I built these machines and I started uh, washing the plastic, shredding the plastic and creating these, these items with it. But I was making contact with a lot of my neighbors. There's, it's a big problem where I live. Um, a lot of homeless people here where I live. Um, so I would make contact with them. I'll bring them to my house and they would help me work or wash plastic or sort the plastic or, you know, uh, sometimes I'll just show them educational videos on plastic and just get their minds uh, thinking about what plastic problems actually happening, you know? And then um, the thing that happened was that I, a lot of my neighbors started complaining of seeing people come in and out of my house. Like, hey, there's a lot of traffic going through here. Decided to go mobile. So now what I do is go, I go out to different campsites and um, I pretty much approach him, hey, is there any way that you can help me out? I need help sorting this plastic. And then um, as I get to know that person, as they're working with me, I pretty much figure out what are the resources that they need to succeed and work them to somebody. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. So do you want to explain to people who may not know what is the problem with single-use plastic or, um, especially because I feel like you have a unique perspective. I live in a rural city, so I mean, it's here, I see it, but I don't have that more bigger city experience, especially being so close to the ocean. So if you want to maybe explain to people who don't really, or aren't really aware of the single-use plastic crisis, do you want to just kind of give a little summary or your version of the summary? Okay, so um, as far as plastic pollution in Los Angeles, um, it's something that most people can see, but they don't really pay attention to it. It's hard for you to walk down the street the 10 steps without seeing a piece of plastic on the floor. I, I actually challenge somebody to see if they can walk a block without seeing a piece of plastic on the floor. Um, my city council member, he just got... Um, invested and a lot of people Sorry. No, I would love after this. I would really love because I love the stuff that you're making. And obviously, um, my focus is uh, prevention, but you're kind of dealing more with the this is what we have. What do we do with what we have? You know? Yeah. So that, which is amazing because like we already have all this crap. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to keep it from um, causing more harm, you know, down the road? Exactly.
But um, so can you explain what you do? Like, like you mentioned, like the machines and like shredding plastic. Is there a way you can kind of take us through start to finish what it is you're doing so people have a better idea? Okay, so um, I pretty much build partnerships with local businesses and organizations to pretty much uh, place a recycling bin at their location. After the bin is there, I pretty much explain to them what will go in the bin, uh, depending on what we use, whether it be uh, after school program and we collect all the spoons and forks or um, uh, a clothing store where they have a bunch of broken clothes hangers and things like that. Um, we'll collect them and then I'll, I'll sort it out with uh, people that I meet up with um, that are facing uh, the homeless situation. First process is actually determining what plastic it is. Um, after we sort it out and we have it in different piles, then we wash it. After we wash it, then we shred it. So we shred it into small pieces that we can work with, that we can either put our, into our injector or our, our extruder. Or we also have an oven that we're working with uh, um, where we make more flower pots right now. That's kind of one of the big projects that we're working on now. So what other products are you making? Or what other projects are you working on right now? Because I saw you had the, the beer handles. Those are awesome. I saw the phone cases, super excited about. Do you want to kind of give a little bit of detail about what you make? Um, so pretty much I can make anything that somebody would want, you know? So my whole thing is I'm not a salesman. I can't really sell things. Uh, my, the nonprofit, I would want it to run as a service for other people. Um, so as far as if they need keychains, if they need bottle openers, if they need, um, a door, if they need anything that they need, um with with the right budget we can make it happen um i'm happy to ha i'm happy to say that i got precious plastic la um on our team to help us um brainstorm to different things um i'm also in part of the precious plastic community which allows me to communicate with people around the world that are doing uh plastic recycling also to um just come up with a game plan for different items that people may want and that's kind of how I've been getting by. That's how we got the, the beer tap handles. Um, they contacted us to see if we can do them. And we got that, ha we made that happen for them. Um, if it wasn't for Surfridge Brewery reaching out to us, we wouldn't be able to have uh, the shredder that we have now. So, you know, companies like that is what, what we need, you know, people that want to support our cause and also have some beautiful items made for them out of out of plastic, out of single use plastics. Really it's beautiful. It looks like more like a marble kind of vibe, I guess, aesthetic. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to work on other things. Um, the, the phone cases are really coming out really awesome. Like shout out to um, Gaia phone case. Gaia phone case is like a after school program that um, reached out to us and they found out about what we're doing and they pretty much uh, paid for the mold to be made. Um, obviously it's it was a precise mold. Um, we don't have the fun to actually get a precise mold made. So this is one of the biggest um, accomplishments for us to have like a precise mold made and they pretty much helped us get old and in exchange, I'm teaching the kids how to recycle the plastic. Um, it's kids aging from middle school to high school students. And it's great, like it's, it's a experience to work with kids because you can see them learning. You can see them, you know, experimenting and asking questions like, hey, what about if we do this? What about if we do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it gets their mind going, like the possibilities of what you can actually do with trash. You know, yeah, and well, they're super I'm creative. Really happy. I'm really happy that I that 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 I'm working with them. You know, um, it's an amazing feeling to to work with work with young kids and teach them about the problems in the world, and they actually want to do something about it. So it's cool. It's 
I get chills, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Let's talk about ways that people can get involved in their own communities. Do you have any tips about how people can make an impact? Um, I say just, I say make an approach to your city council and figure out what resources are actually out there for your community. Um, everyone in is uh, an organization that helps you do that. So you can actually contact them and tell them that you want to be involved in your city council and, you know, find out when the next meeting is and just sit in and, and see what they're talking about, see what's actually going on in your community and maybe get into it that way. Um, another way would be um, do what I did and start a precious plastic in your own city. Um, it, it, there's so many units that can go through um, the plastic uh, problem. You can be uh, a, a community outreach program. You can be uh, a collection point. You can be a fabricator. You can be uh, the actual recycling facility. Um, there's different ways that you can go about the plastic thing. Um, so it's up to you. You just got to do it and go out there and get it, you know? Okay. In regards to zero waste, do you have any, what's like one or two tips that you would give to someone who's beginning this journey? I say second guess everything that you buy, everything that you purchase, realize if you need it or not, you know? Um, you know, people say recycle, reduce, reuse, um, it should be refuse is the first one, yes, you know, absolutely. you don't have to buy it. If you don't have to buy it, if you, you know, just don't buy it, you know, um, it's, it can be hard, but you know, that's the way you grow. And, and I feel like, you know, zero waste is, is such a, a, an amazing movement, you know, um, and 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 yeah, I would I would love to to know more myself. You know, there's always more to learn. Uh, you can never learn enough. You know, there's always different methods and different ways that you can get by um, and being zero waste. So I, I say, uh, second guess everything that you buy. Uh, reduce your consumption, pretty much. And then lastly, how can people connect with you? Because you're doing incredible things and I want to bring awareness to what you're doing and send people uh, your way to support you. So what are some uh, ways that people can contact you? Are there any social medias or anything you want to bring attention to? Uh, yeah, so uh, you can reach us at uh, oneplasticlife.org. Uh, we also have an Instagram, oneplasticlife and a Facebook One Plastic Life also. Hey, um